Today's activity is what we call a current balance lab. The purpose of today's activity is to find the magnetic field strength of a horseshoe magnet. In other words, you've got a, just a regular horseshoe magnet. Okay? It provides an external magnetic field to a wire. We want to find the field strength that's produced by that normal horseshoe magnet. There's two parts to it. Part one is going to involve the apparatus that you see up there. So is part two for that matter. But what you do with that apparatus is a little bit different in part one as it is in part two. Let's label some of the parts here. This thing that we see right here is called a power supply. That power supply generates an electric current. This is a retort stand, of course, which just simply holds up the apparatus. The apparatus that we call a current balance apparatus. Which is resting on a digital scale, a digital scale that measures to the nearest one hundredth of a gram. So it's pretty precise. That makes it pretty expensive. So I'll ask you to take care of it. Try not to drop it off the edge of the table or put a whole lot of mass on it to wreck the spring in it. Okay? There's also some wires that connect the power supply to this current balance apparatus. In the first experiment, part one, you're going to keep the length of wire constant through the experiment. There are six different lengths of wire that are in a box. Okay, six different printed circuits with lengths of wire. You're going to pick the longest one, which is 8.4 centimeters. They're labeled, so you'll know which one that is. Plug it in to this little current balance apparatus that you see right here, and then drop it down into this little horseshoe U-shaped magnet that's resting on the scale. Make sure that that wire isn't touching the magnets. To make sure that it's completely within the magnets. At least the horizontal part of it is completely within the magnets. Keep that length of wire constant all throughout this entire part one of the experiment. Put a close up there, right? Place it in between the sides of the magnets. Make sure that it's, uh, again, not touching. Make sure that it's solidly in the middle there. Okay, and then press zero on this. Pair that. Okay, once this is all set up, we want this scale to read zero. And you'll see why you want it to read zero in just a few moments here. On the power supply, this should actually be turned off as you're doing all this. Okay, the picture of it shows that it's turned on, but make sure it's turned off with the on-off switch right there. I want you to turn the voltage knob as far to the right as it will go. Turn the current knob as far to the left as it will go. Okay, that's going to give us zero electric current flowing through this wire. That's what we want to start off. But in part one, we're going to manipulate the electric current. We're going to change the electric current and see how the magnetic force responds to that electric current. So at this point, you're going to adjust the current knob to the right so that it, the current on the, uh, the power supply reads something other than zero. That value should go up as you turn the current knob to the right. I want you to record the value of that current is the first box in your table. You've already recorded the length of the wire. should be 8.4 centimeters. What's this mass thing? Why is it in quotation marks? Well, as this electric current is exposed to the external magnetic field, that wire will experience a magnetic force. But if the magnets cause a force on the wire, then the wire will cause an equal and opposite force on the magnet. So the magnet is going to be pushed down. The wire is pushed up, the magnet is pushed down. That's going to trick this scale into thinking there's more mass. It registered zero before, but now that it's being pushed down, the scale thinks there's 0.29 grams of mass on it. So we're going to record the mass. I put that in quotation marks because it's not really mass. It's just what the scale thinks is mass. Record that in the second box of your table. And then change the electric current. Keep going up and up and up. So you get 10 different values. But I want you to max out at no more than 2 amps. So if you find yourself after trial 6 already at 2 amps, then just go back and fill in some of the blanks. It doesn't matter if they're in order, as long as your highest number is not above 2 amps. That's trial 1. Or I should say part 1, because part 1 involves 10 trials.
part two, same apparatus, but this time we're keeping the current constant, not the length of the wire constant. The constant current should be somewhere around one amp. If, it, if you can't get exactly one by fiddling with it, that's okay. 0 0.98 is fine. 1.05 is fine. It doesn't really matter what the value is as long as it's a constant value through, the, through the, this part of the experiment. This time, you're going to change the length of the wire. This little cartridge that you plugged into the arms there of that current balance apparatus, you're going to unplug that, and you're going to put in a new cartridge that has a different length of wire. So you're going to see with the same current what the effect of changing the length of wire is on the magnetic force. Now, the, you can see here, we only have, uh, it's only showing five right here, actually, because one of them's in the machine. The 8.4 centimeter wires is in the apparatus when I took this picture. There should be six different lengths. So trial number one, or experiment number one, you're going to do 10 trials. Experiment number two, you can only do six because we only have six different lengths of wire. Measure uh, the current, which is somewhere around 1.0 amp. Record the exact value. Okay, measure the wire length, which is printed right on the uh, right on the printed circuit, and then record the so-called mass that that you see on the scale as a result of that. Repeat that six times so that you get six different trials, and then it comes for time for analysis. You can see in your analysis that the first two columns are the same as your data table. The last column is different. This is the one we really want, magnetic force. How are you going to find magnetic force? Well, if the scale was tricked into thinking that there was more mass on it, it's because it was tricked into thinking there was a certain gravitational force acting on it. But that pretend gravitational force that the scale thought it was reading really wasn't gravity at all. It was a magnetic force. So we're going to find that magnetic force simply by multiplying the so-called mass of the scale reads by 9.81. Make sure it's in kilograms. So if you got it measured in grams, divide it by 1,000, multiply it by 9.81, and you'll get the magnetic force. Same thing over here. Divide by 1,000, multiply by 9.81, get magnetic force. Then it's time for two graphs. The first graph is force versus current. That relates to part one of the experiment. You should get a straight line for that. Any straight line graph can be described by this equation. We did this analysis back with our first lab of the year, just with completely different variables. Y equals mx plus b. b is the y-intercept, and, and there shouldn't be a y-intercept for this, so we can scratch that off. The y-axis is force. M is the slope, and the x-axis is current, I. Now what you should do is find an equation on your data sheet that has those two variables in there, F and I. What's well, the one that I gave you a few minutes ago? That new one, F is equal to ILB. Cross off F because it appears in both. Cross off I because it appears in both. That means the slope is equal to whatever is left. You've got the value of the slope from your graph. You've got the length of the wire because you measured that, right? It was 8.4 centimeters, although you want to convert that to meters. I want you to find the value of the magnetic field. You're going to do almost the same thing for part two of the experiment. Except part two of the experiment involves plotting a graph of force versus length of wire. You should also get a straight line for that one. The equation that describes that, y equals mx plus b, b disappears again because there should be no y-intercept. y is force, m is slope, x this time is length of wire. The equation that relates to that is ILB again. Cross off things that appear in both. 
Now we're left with the slope equal to I times B. You got the slope. The current is somewhere around 1 amp, whatever it is that you measured. Solve for the magnetic field. What should you notice about the magnetic field you found in part B or part 2 versus the magnetic field that you found in part 1? What should you find about those two values? Don't tell me what the number is going to be. Just tell me what they should be relative to one another. We're talking about the external magnetic field caused by this U-shaped horseshoe magnet. Did we change the magnet? So what should the magnetic field be in part 2 versus part 1? It should be the same value, right? It should be really close to the same value. And this experiment tends to work out really well. So you should get, if you don't get values that are close to the same, you've made a mistake somewhere. And in fact, you guys even know kind of ballpark where it should be. Right? 10 to the minus 5 Tesla was the Earth's magnetic field. Usually 10 to the minus 2-ish is, is, is the uh, magnetic field strength caused by bar magnets. So it's probably going to be in that 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3. If it's not, you should try again. I'm not going to ask you to calculate a percent difference here. They just get the values of the magnetic field in both experiments, and that's good enough. If they're not close to the same, though, then you should try again, because they should be close to the same. What do you got to hand in? I want your data, which is that table, two tables, I should say, the analysis, which is two more tables, and your graphs, and the whole idea of the, the calculation of magnetic field. I need the conclusion, which is basically, what's the value of the magnetic field? And how do you know? And I need sources of error. And sources of error is just, you know, two or three good things that could have been different, could have been done a little bit differently, could have paid a little bit more attention to that you didn't think of while you were doing it, or that I didn't say to you. <laughs>